You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! It's a very personal, very important thing. Hell, it's a family model. Are you ready, Jerry? I'm ready. I want to make sure you're ready, brother. Here it is. Show me the money. Hey, everybody, I hope you enjoyed your Thanksgiving for all those U.S. listeners out there. Everybody else, I hope you're still working. Hey, I got a quick episode today as a way of getting you focused on the rest of the year. And this is a very tricky part of the year. It is probably the trickiest five weeks of the entire year in the most bizarre way. You know, in the summer, we think, oh, the business just went away. This is the time of year where so much is trying to get done. This is the time where our clients have urgency to spend money. Most of them lose their budget if they don't spend it by the end of the year. But we also, we, we get tricked to think that we really have five weeks. What we have to do is look at the calendar now. While you're listening to this, think about the calendar. I'm recording this on the 26th, the Sunday right after Thanksgiving here in the U.S., and we're going into the very last week of November. And you think, oh, you've got five weeks if you count them out. Okay, now, wait a second. Now we really look at the calendar. Wait, oh, Christmas falls on the 25th, as it does every year, on a Monday. Now, this is precarious because there might be a lot of people taking that whole week off to spend time with the kids and enjoy their Christmas and their holidays, whatever you celebrate. So if they're doing that, that means they're gone. The last day they're working is the 22nd. Now, let me ask you one question. There's three questions I'm going to ask you and a a couple of bonus questions in this podcast that are really going to help you accelerate your income for the rest of the year. Question number one is what are all the expiration dates on your proposals? Now you can say, well, I haven't sent out many proposals. Well, uh, most companies has probably got a two to three week purchasing approval process. So they better get out there soon. And you know, what are people focused on right now? You know, people are kind of shutting down the end of the year, unless you have something really unique. And I'm going to teach you how to make something really unique. I'm also going to teach you what happens if people go radio silent during this period, because this is the most common thing. But you first got to understand, little to nothing's going to get done that last week. So now we're down to four weeks. Okay, now this week, what's going to happen? People are going to have, you know, the turkey hangover. Monday and Tuesday are going to be a little rusty. (laughs) People aren't exactly going to be in the top of their game on Monday and Tuesday. And maybe you're not either. You probably won't get to this until the week after. So I'm not (laughs) trying to mislead anybody. So we're we're really kind of strapped with now. Wait a second. We're down to three weeks, Brian. Oh, no. Okay. What is the date that your deal is going to close on. I used to ask myself this question all the time because you have an expiration date on the proposal. You have an estimate of how long things take. You get a sense once you're talking to procurement about what they're going through. And then you add a couple of days to it because people are just slow and, oh, you really wanted that purchase? Oh, you should have told me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, and you know, all they have to do is, you know, type it into the system or just hit a button. But, you know, they got to understand the purchasing mentality. They get power by slowing things down. They don't, they're not like salespeople. Salespeople get power by speeding things up. Most people in a capitalist society get power by making things happen. Purchasing doesn't because if something goes wrong, all, what they can say, they cannot say, well, I got it done fast. Well, you're not supposed to get it done fast. And I was wondering what took so long? Well, they got to check a bunch of boxes. They got to make sure you're not a criminal. They got to check it, all this stuff. 
you got to make sure they got a right price, all these standards, all these, make sure everyone approved it, double check on that, everything is spelled right, zip plus four, all these crazy insane things to add their value to it. So they're not incentivized to get things done fast. Yes, it should take five minutes, but it's going to take five days. So number one is think about what day is it supposed to close, not supposed to, going to. I catch myself all the time because you got to think through. It's like, okay, how long did it take last time? How long does it typically take for a company like this? Do they happen to be somewhat government related or, you know, a nonprofit or some have some kind of committee internally? And you can ask your friends who have sold to them before. How long does it typically take? And don't ask the people you're, you're selling to. They don't know. They really don't. I hear all these sales experts. Well, how long did it take last time? Oh, oh 10 seconds. I, oh, last week. When do you need it? Last week. Oh. Uh, Oh, every time I've heard that question asked, it's like, okay, where does it go from here? What is the next step? Who is that? Why would they do it? You've got it at the tough questions now because the big difference is most likely you're going to get paid less on this deal in January than you are today. Now, why is that, Brian? Your comp plan is going to change. If you're in any kind of growing company, your whole territory might change. Your comp plan is going to become less aggressive. And that, if that deal is known, they're assuming it's going to happen. Say you got a, a 100K deal. That it's supposed to close in December. It slips to January. What if every manager I've ever met just takes that 100K and adds it to your quota? So essentially, you don't get paid anything on it because that now becomes part of your quota. And as your quota goes up, your commission rate goes down and you don't get paid on it. That's why December is so critical. And no one pays attention to this. Well, they say, well, I still get commission on it. Yeah, but you get a lesser percentage on it and everything else else. So basically, you're going to get 10% more quota, which means your commission rate goes down 10%. So essentially, you're not getting paid for it. This is why we're in such a business where we have to manage expectations because everybody does. It's not being about misleading or manipulative. We're playing the game, whether you admit it or not, you're in the game. Okay, you can sit there and get hit by the ball or you can catch the ball. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. You defying your ability to play the game doesn't change that you're in a game. Okay, we're all in the game of life. We're all in the game of sales. This is how it's played. I'm trying to tell you the unwritten rules that no one's going to tell you. Your manager's not, not going to tell you, oh, yeah, I'm just going to add it to your quota. But of course they're going to. Why? Because they know it's a sure thing. That's why visibility into our Q4 deals is so critical. So number one is what day is it going to close on? Because this will force you to think about the details. We're really comfortable at the, because we're still at like the 10,000 foot view of our deals, our pipeline and our territory right now. I need to get you down to where you're landing. Where are you going to land that deal? Do you see the runway? Is the wind blowing? Do you have enough torque? Is the plane in the right angle? Is, does it feel good? Are you getting the groove? Are you getting communication? This is what we've got to be thinking about now to get these deals in before the end of the year. Number two is will it close in Q4? Now, if it doesn't, we want to deprioritize it and focus on what will close in Q4. You know, you can try and do the, you know, the bend over backwards and I'll, I'll get to how do you kind of push things forward. But if it's not, if you, if you definitely think it's not going to close in Q4, put it on the back burner, uh, you know, move it out in your CRM so your manager doesn't have much visibility to it. You know, move it down a little bit in dollar amount. You know, maybe maybe a lot, a lot in dollar amount, so you're getting less and less visibility on it, and focus on what's gonna close. Because guess what, on, on the 25th, that last week of December, what do you want to be doing? So you got this beautiful week if you get all your deals closed. Let's say you get all your deals closed by the 22nd. You've got a week to chill. You know, or a week to do whatever you want, because we also have a great icebreaker this time of year. How was your Thanksgiving? How was your holiday? What are you doing for the holidays? Also, here's how to get a meeting with everybody in December. Hey, I want to stop by and give you something. No one is going to say no to that. 
Why? The law of reciprocation. People are like, the least I can do is say hi to them. You know, you don't have to bring much. I used to bring a book. A book on the whatever industry, whatever leader, like Elon Musk's book is always popular, or Jeff Bezos. You know, Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world right now. Unbelievable, right? 23 years ago, he was uh, an entrepreneur, you know, selling a book online. Now he's the richest man in the world. Ah, yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's a thousand books about him. Bring, bring a $15, $20 book by, you know, bring a coffee by, bring, you know, some homemade cookies. My dad used to do that. My mom used to make homemade cookies. They were fantastic. And my dad would drop them by all his clients um, right around this time. No one said no. Used to get all these thank you notes. And everybody said, everybody loved it. Why? Because people love to get little stupid gifts. <laughs> you know, they do. It, it is just human nature. And they feel obligated to talk with you. So you have this. And you say, well, I'm not an outside person. Well, guess what? You can do all this shit online stuff online. Sorry, didn't mean to be explicit through Amazon or whoever and send them little gifts. And just as a thank you, hey, I really appreciate your mentorship, not your customer, but, you know, just you being part of my network, you know, you know, five, 10, 15, $25 little gifts, even if it's out of your own pocket, you will get a call back, but don't do it as a quid pro quo. Don't do it as to get something. Do it out of pure generosity, and you will naturally get something in return. And, you know, you do it to your A-level prospects, the people that you either want to get something done with, you want their time, you want their cooperation, and they're looking good for the next year. It's now thinking like a salespreneur versus an employee. Okay, now what's number three? How do I, why would they buy now? Why would they, what is their reason for buying in December, buying in 2017 versus 2018? Now, if they, they, if they don't have a good reason, and the good reason is not your quota, sorry, that's your good reason. Their good reason is they need to get this project done. They have budget right now. The budget goes away. Things are going to change there, which moves me to my next thing. The way do you create eight urgency is that, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in January. I used to use this all the time. Who knows what's going to happen next year? There's all kinds of rumblings. You put a little bit of concern, maybe call a little fear into them that things aren't going to be the same as they are now, that what you have today is going to be different. We just went through this classic one, and we're going to go through another one on tomorrow, the 27th, because there's Black Friday. These crazy deals, insane deals. But what it gets is people shopping. You know, I, I got one. I got this Ninja Blender from our, my man Jeff Bezos on, on Amazon. It was half price. I go, I need a blender. I love a blender. <laughs> I can't beat this price. I'm going to get that. That was my reason. It's like, is this sale going to last another day? I, I immediately got on my, my phone. I ordered the blender. Came yesterday. Love it. Now, you also... This is what you want to do. It may be price, you know, it might be configuration, it might be availability, it might be whatever you can construct to get a little bit of concern that come, you know, December 26th or January, what, what day are we coming? We're going to come back the first. Things are going to be different and it's not going to be the same old deal, meaning that, oh, it's going to be harder, it's going to be more expensive, it's going to be different. You always want to put that level of concern because there has to be that action. Now, the Black Friday, it's Black Friday. It's not Black Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's Black Friday. Okay, then what happens? Then they have Cyber Monday. Okay, is that better than Black Friday? I don't know. And I'm probably going to buy something stupid on, on Cyber Monday. You know, I think I did last year. It's like, hey, but if something's half price, I'm going to buy something, right? And, and that, that's what... The, the, Retail creates urgency all the time. I sat around, you know, a uh, blender, a little bit of blender, you know, you know, I didn't do anything. I needed a blender. I wanted a blender, but I needed a, a compelling event for me to get a blender. Okay, now I got the blender and I love it. And I wish I got it six months ago. Now, if somebody was talking to me, say a sales rep saying, you know what? You know, if you wait a month 
you know, who knows what this blender could double in price. You know, the, uh, you know, the availability isn't what it used to be. And you're not getting the benefits of the blend. You're not getting those healthy smoothies. You're not eating well. You, now you get something to make the healthy smoothies with. It takes seconds. It's fantastic. You, you love it. Now, <laughs> that's what selling is about, is moving the timeline for people and a reason why to do it now. Did I want it? Yes. Could I afford it? Yes. Did I need it? Yes. Did I buy it? No. I've only bought it when there was a compelling event. That's what we have to create. You just put a, I used to put a little bit of concern, you know, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in January. Let's just get this done because we don't want to like start from scratch in January and start all over. And then everything changes. And we have to do this and that and the other thing. And, and no one's going to understand how we got here. Let's get it done now. Do you think we can get it done now? How would we get it done now? Use the how questions. Now, go back with my interview with Chris Voss. Now, this guy's a genius with this stuff. And I'm using his line where, where now let's say you get radio silence. And you're going to get a lot of it. Because guess what's going to happen? That week, now, if, you, if your proposals are dated, expire on the 29th, good luck. Now, you've got to like rethink, okay, I'm going to get it done on the 22nd. And, you know, make up whatever story you have to say, like, you know, a lot of people are going to be gone. I'm concerned that I'm, I, I got to tell you, I'm not going to be able to offer you that same thing January 1st. I'm just telling you that. I'm warning you things are changing. Let's get it done the 22nd so we can both enjoy our holiday. And everyone's all done. Start that this week if you have anything dated on the 29th. Honestly, you, what you want to do is on the 22nd, that Friday, you're basically turning the switch off, enjoying that last week of the year, spend time with the kids and the family, you know, <laughs> eating your, drinking your eggnog and doing whatever it is you do this time of year and enjoying your life instead of that panicking. Now, I, I can't tell you how many December 20, you know, because I was a maniac. I was the type of guy, like, even if it slipped a week, I'm still trying to get it because I'm accelerators, those over quota numbers. I want to be number one. Yeah. Okay. If that's you, that's fine. But, you know, most normal people, which I'm not, want to enjoy that, that holiday, you know, and then I'd, I'd fly somewhere on the, on the holiday, get back, you know, I'd be all worried. And then the last, that night I just go crash into bed. That's no way to live. I'm telling you, I learned from my lesson. There's no way to live. Let, let's get everything done by the 22nd. You'll enjoy your life. Create that urgency. Now, if you get radio silence, now I'd say on Monday the tw the 18th at the latest, I would I would more like it move it to the 11th. If you you haven't heard from somebody in a week or after two or three attempts, even if you don't use my system of having a scheduled appointment to talk, even if it's for five minutes. Get cell phone numbers. Text is the critical thing at this time and in this point in our history. Phone calls and emails, you know, people are fine not returning them. Text, people return. You know, you say, hey, offer your cell phone number. And what you'll find is people will offer theirs in reciprocation. Once you have that, then you have the text thing. And I find texting is the most effective way of communicating with people today. Everyone's doing it. And in business, people kind of uh, ignore it a little bit. I always tell people, you know, just uh, text me when you can talk. And if I can, I'll pick up the phone. If I can't, I will pick a time through text instead of through email. I get too many emails, you know, voicemail, unless I recognize your number, I'm not picking up. You're crazy to insane to. Why? Because if you don't recognize the number, that means you don't know them. If you don't know them, it's probably about them and not you. It's probably a salesperson. Now, okay, let's say they go radio silent. This is the Chris Voss line. It works every time. He didn't even make it up. I think he, he got it from somebody else. It doesn't matter. Origin doesn't matter. You say, have you given up on getting this deal done this year? And you'll get a response. That way, you, you, you'll at least find out. And if it can't be done, there's no way, and, but you'll, you'll know where you are. You'll know whether to come up with a contingency plan or just like accept it. You know, uh, you know if you're like me, you're probably not going to accept it. And you're going to try something else, go up and around them or, or over the side of them. Or you, you can just be like, okay, you know, the, the reality is, you know, they're a big company. They can't get it done. But you'll find out instead of like being miserable and let it boil inside of you with anger and 
resentment. Okay, those are some really good ones. I've got, I got some bonus ones for you now. Okay, no RSVPs with your manager. RSVPs is I'll be there for you next quarter. You know, because guess what the manager is going to do? If you miss set expectations in Q4, you're in trouble because your manager's probably in accelerators as well. And if if that person sees those deals slipping into next year, you're going to get quota for them. And you got to be careful. This now is the time to be managing expectations for 2018 because the managers in September started d- designing what things are going to look like next year, and they're based a lot off of you know the phony baloney stuff you've been putting in that CRM system, you know, to either keep your job or do whatever it is. And the more junior reps put in tons of stuff. You know, if your quota is one million, they put five million in pipeline. You know, and managers believe what they want to believe. They're human beings. So they're taking that and they're thinking, oh, that, this is real. <laughs> this is, yeah. you, know, it, you know, Johnny or Janie, you know, with six hours of sales experience came up with five million in pipeline. They're geniuses. OK, let's, let, we need to hire five salespeople to close all these deals. And, and no one's really thinking it's all fiction. Right. This is the, the age of insanity with as far as sales management because everyone believes what's in the CRM no one believes in actually talking to somebody you know <laughs> and I, we're going to get into this with a lot of my guests and I've, I've I've got some great interviews coming up but I wanted to get this kind of monologue out there as a way of helping you really get focused on the next five weeks of your life because they're they're critical for your income and they're critical for 2018 because if you blow it right now and you think you're smart by putting, you know, 3x your your quota into pipeline for Q1, let me tell you, that is going to come back to bite you hard. You need to put in enough for them not to fire you, but not too much for them to hose you over. Because it's crazy things happen now. you got to understand, at your manager's level, how, much, how well does your manager really understand your business? You can answer that question. Now, now how well does that manager understand their business? Uh, trust me, I've, I've been on the board of companies, and it's like... Uh, until you you really have to ask like three questions to drill down because it's like what they present is horseshit, and then you got to ask the questions, and all of a sudden there's a little bit of reality. Then you ask a next level of question because they'll be like, they do the classic thing. They put like oh next quarter we got twice as much business, so just give us ninety days and leave us alone. But the problem is that, that that's all horseshit. People are just buying time and not really solving the real problem, and they don't want to hear anyone else's input and what happens is no one's no one's grasping reality and i'm I'm telling you how are you feeling when i'm telling you this do you feel like you have a lot of time left in the year you know it it does feel like you have uh, it feels like this i i literally have a calendar on my wall i'm looking at right now for the whole year and uh, and literally a week ago I, i i even forgot what week thanksgiving was because i'm like oh there's plenty of time left we 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 create our own delusions. What I want to do is wake you up, shake you, get you out of that delusion to focus on what's going to happen for you because this is the time to make things happen for you. Let's see, do I have any other bonuses here for you? Oh, wait a second. I've got some great interviews coming up. We're going to do a lot of stuff based around the Gong Bong blog posts about what makes the differentiator in the sales conversation because it's that in-field activity about what really makes the difference between an A, B, and a C player and a Maverick. Now, if you go to LinkedIn and join the Maverick Sellers Group, you get my Maverick Matrix for free. Just join the group. It gets automatically emailed to you. Completely free. I don't bug you. I don't, you know, I'm not going to email you anything. Other than that, and that comes from LinkedIn, not me. And in there, you can start differentiating yourself because if you want to be successful in sales, you're in sales for a reason. Either you're money motivated or you can't do anything else. Those are the only two reasons anyone gets into sales. Nobody gets up and says, you know, I don't want to, you know, create a rocket. I want to get rejected all day. No, no one says that. People say like, oh, wait a second. I can make more than a CEO with uh, little to no real education. All I have to do is like listen to Brian Burns' podcast, The Maverick Selling Method, and I can become a millionaire. Yeah, you can. You have to do a little work and you have to reflect on your mistakes and learn from them and learn from my mistakes. And you can. That's why I give away The Maverick Selling Method, the full book, 
No, no abbreviation, no one chapter free. The whole book in PDF format for writing a review for one of my podcasts. Screenshot it. You know, I'll know how to do it. It's a little different with the iPhone 10. <laughs> but screenshot it and email it to me at briangburns at me.com and I will reply with the full book. Now, this is a podcast review. This is not a comment on my LinkedIn profile. This is not a, an e, uh, email to me saying, I love the podcast. That's not a review. It's a review on the podcast player like Apple Podcasts or iTunes or call it Google Play or Stitcher. Any of them are fine. And any of my podcasts, I got three of them. I got the B2B Revenue Show. I've got Sales Questions podcast and the Brutal Truth that you're listening to now. Any one of those is fine with me. I'm really easy. And that's, that's kind of my Christmas present to you. I'm going to keep it going for another couple of weeks. I also got my course coming up, start the conversation, get the meeting, and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. And I'm going to do it on the, on the phone, through email, through social, and any of those approaches to start a conversation with any company, how to break into all these companies. And it's just, it's not the CEO or the, the C-level. It's however you want to get in for you. I'm going to show you all kinds of ways. I've been teaching this course in person for a couple of years now. It's insanely effective. Also, last week, I, I announced a partnership that I've, I've got with Grow Labs. Grow Labs, if, you're, if your company is looking for a great way of getting a lot of outbound activity with a little bit of effort, you, you go to growlabs.com. You can get a demo. Just search down in the how'd you hear about us, say the B2B revenue show. Now, that, if you're an individual, this is probably cost prohibitive. But if your company is looking, if you're a manager and you're looking for a way of doing this, it's a, it's, a, it's a very cost effective way. Individually, it might be a little expensive. For those people, I'm going to show you in my start the conversation, get the meeting, show how I do it for, you know, you know, what any individual sales rep can afford. Also, I've got a lot of content coming up that's based around the blog posts of my partners, Prezi.com. We're talking about presentations. You're going to have to be doing a lot of them in Q1. Also, you know, nudge is really in the research and how people make buying decisions. And I did an episode about that last week. You got to listen to this. And December is a beautiful month to catch up on the brutal truth because I'm going to be cleaning it up. I'm running out of disk space on my provider, so I got to be cleaning it up. So if you want those episodes, just download them all. They're all yours to keep because once I take them down, you know, I'm, I'm just running out of space. Really appreciate you listening. Anybody who wants to help me out, all I ask is connect with me on LinkedIn, share my content on any social channel that you, you feel comfortable with, tell you tell that sales rep next to you to to listen to the brutal truth about sales and selling. Send me your questions. I love working on them. I know I'm way behind on that, but I'm going to catch up because I'm going nowhere <laughs> that week of Christmas. I'm, I'm hanging out at the office. I, I got lots of projects to work on. And I really appreciate you listening. Got great stuff coming up this week. So look for another drop shortly. Let's see you then. I want to know the truth because deep down in places that you don't talk about at team and management meetings, you want me on that call. You need me on that call. We use words like fleet view, volume control, total cost of ownership. We use these words as a backbone of a life spent negotiating something. You use them as a punchline. I have neither the time nor inclination to explain myself to people who rise and sleep under the very blanket of revenue that I provide and then question the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, may I suggest you pick up a phone and make some sales calls. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you're entitled to. Did you expense the lap dances? I did the job I was hired. Did you expense the lap dances? You're goddamn right I did!